Dragonfly is kind of a radically different method of uploading images in that whereas Paperclip and Carrier Wave process these images and store the different versions of them, Dragonfly does not do that. It only stores the original version of the image that's uploaded. Then it regenerates each image on the fly by the geometry string that you send in. Now the advantage of this is that you don't have to store all these different versions and if for some reason your layout changes and you require different versions of these assets, you don't need to go back and reprocess all of them. The disadvantage is that it can be really cumbersome on your application to generate an image each time it's loaded. The way that it gets around it with Dragonfly is client-side caching with rack cache which means it'll just generate the image the first time it's actually requested, save that unique file name, and then serve that from whatever cache it's using. So we're going to take a look at how to do that now. So here is Dragonfly. Here's the Dragonfly homepage. So let's go ahead and see how we start working with Dragonfly. It looks like we add a Dragonfly accessor to our model class. And then we call the thumbnail or the different version with the geometry string right there, right in our view. So let's go ahead and click on using with rails. In our gem file, we add dragonfly. And then we generate a dragonfly model for it. So let's open up our gem file here. All right, we got dragonfly. Stop my server. Bundle that, make sure that all looks good and works. Okay, that is all installed. Uh, let's go ahead and do the same thing that we did before and generate a model to work with. Okay, we add the pretend flag, skipping the assets, good to go. Now let's see what else we do. Looks like we also need to generate Dragonfly. Okay, so this creates a Dragonfly initializer for us. Let's go ahead and check that out and see what it looks like. So it looks like we are using an image magic plugin. Sounds right. Uh, we're protecting from denial of service attacks. Sounds good. Uh, and this is using a file data store. Um, once again, it might support something else like memory, and it shows where we are storing all of the different Dragonfly images. Okay, so that looks good. Let's see what else we have to do. We need to add a column for the UID and the name. This is how Dragonfly is going to keep track of the generated styles and sizes of images in its cache. So let's open up the migration. Here's create dragonfly images. And let's see what we needed. We needed a string for the asset UID. And the asset name. All right. That seems to be what we need to do. Let's see if there's anything else we need to do. We need to add Dragonfly Accessor Asset to our model. Okay, let's migrate and see what happens. Okay, so we've migrated. And let's go ahead, start our Rails server. Now, once again, we're going to need to add a link to this in our application view. All right, now we got another tab for it. New Dragonfly image. Let's see if the Dragonfly documentation says we need to do anything special. Uh, nope, looks like we just add a file field for it and permit 
the asset in the strong parameters. So let's go ahead and do that. Open up the form. Okay, and let's go ahead and open up our parameters here. Okay, let's go ahead and see what happens if we try and upload an image now. So we save it. It says it was successfully created. Let's see how we link to it. If we open the documentation back up, we would call image tag and then the thumb and the size that we want. So I'll open up that show view here. And I'll give it the size. And it looks like it wanted something else here. So if the asset has been stored is only when we display that. So we'll say if the asset has been stored is when we display it. So let's reload this page and see what happens. Oh, nothing. Let's see what's going on here. Well, it looks like we debug this and it's giving an actual Ruby class name here, which is a little bit strange. Let's see if we can figure out what's happening there. Oh, if we look back at the documentation, we are missing this URL method which makes sense. We are actually just getting the class instead. So we'll change that to URL, reload the page, and look, there is our cute animal. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and modify the index page like we did with all the others. Give it the class. Okay, so there we go. Looks like we got that all working. Uh, now let's go ahead and make it work in the form. And we can use that same helper that we did in the show page. So I'm gonna open up the show page right here. And we're saying if asset stored, we'll display it. Now we'll reload the page and okay, it looks like we have access to the current image. And if we change it, all right, we have a different image. Now let's go ahead and see what happens here. We inspect this element and the source of this image is this really long, really strange file name which is actually the fingerprint for this particular size and this particular geometry of the image. So Dragonfly calculates all that for us automatically. 
And let's see if we look at the console here or the network. Reload the page. We get this 304 not modified header, and that is just going to be cached for us since it's already downloaded. And once again, this only needs to be regenerated the first time that an image is accessed. It doesn't do it when it is stored. Now, there is a ton of stuff that you can do with Dragonfly. It supports different data stores. Uh, it also generates different text. You could store files. You can store all of these different things in memory if you want to. Uh, look, it even supports Amazon S3, uh, CouchDB, MongoDB, and you can build your own if you really want to. That's a little bit beyond the scope of this particular live stream, though. And there's uh, some different generators that work with Jack Dragonfly. Um, you can implement your own generator if you want to. In this example, they're generating sine waves. Um, not really sure why you would want to do that, but I'm sure there's a valid reason at some point. Anyway, a um, bunch of different options that you can do, and uh, that is pretty much the basics of working with Dragonfly. Mm -hmm.